In this video we're going to continue looking at Pythagoras' theorem. So this is going to be Pythagoras' theorem part 2. And remember from the last video we had a picture and we had this relationship here between the sides that c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. And we'll illustrate that with a picture to show you what it means and help explain why this is true and how it works. But remember in the last video what we did is we tried to find this length c here. Now we're going to look at the other problem. What if we know c and b and c we wanted to find a? We could rearrange this formula a bit. You hopefully remember how to rearrange formulas from algebra. So that would be c squared minus b squared. And that would give you a squared. And say I wanted to find b, it's very similar. We do b squared equals c squared minus a squared. Remember, this is finding a squared and b squared, so then to find the length itself you have to square root that. So basically, if it's a smaller side, you do the hypotenuse squared minus the other side that you're given squared. So let us just show you some examples so that you can see what I mean. This one here is the hypotenuse because if you can see it's opposite the right angle. So square that. That's a hundred. This one's one of the smaller sides. That's seven squared. Which is forty nine. Remember we're taking away this time, so 40, 100 minus 49, 51. But remember this is given with squared, so then we need to take the square root of 51. So that's this length here. Okay, that's just an arrow to show you which side I mean. So let's look at some a few more problems. See I had this triangle here and I wanted to find this side. Well again 13 is the hypotenuse, it's the biggest. It's opposite to the right angle. That's how you know which one's the hypotenuse. Even if the triangle's rotated, the hypotenuse is always the side opposite the right angle. So we'll do 13 squared, 4 squared, this is 169, this is 16, and then like before we we'll subtract, then we we'll get 153, mm -hmm. when we we'll subtract that, the side then is the square root of 153. And again, you do these on your calculator if you don't know what they are. If they're not whole numbers. So let's just do one more of these and then I'll, I'll show you an interesting problem. Just to make the video more interesting and make it a little bit longer. <laughs> So in this one we've got 8 centimetres and 5 centimetres. Again this one's the hypotenuse. So that's 8 squared, 5 squared. I'll figure both of these out. Again we'll subtract. So then we we'll get um, 29.
39, so you got 39 there. And the answer is going to be the square root of 39. Sorry about the 29, I'm not sure where I got that from. And finally I want to show you an interesting problem. So I'm going to rub a lot of this off now. So if you need the answers you can pause the video and read them. Just to give us a bit of room to do some working out. Oops, I've rubbed out an important part by mistake. No, oh, no, I haven't. I thought I did. So here we've got a square. I want to find this diagonal. diagonal. We can split it up into a triangle. And it's a square, so both of these sides are one. And remember, this is a right angle. So, this diagonal is a hypotenuse. Because you see, we just need one triangle for this problem. Because then once we've made it, we can find this length here. This is like a famous problem, so I thought I'd show you. We square the two sides, they are both 1, we sum them, we get 2, so it's 1 squared, 1 squared, sum, 2, and then we square root 2. And this is basically how people found out about these irrational numbers that, are, that happen from square roots called thirds or radicals when they had these two lengths here, this square and tried to find this diagonal that gives you the square root of minus two which we've learned earlier on in maths is irrational number and hopefully you know what that means if not then it's easy enough to check out or I've got a video about that as well